Good evening again, people. We're about to start out in most of the service in here at uh, Flank Hall. And uh, I'd like to borrow your voices for a few minutes. Yes, amen. I want to uplift this singing voices tonight. We're going to do number two, number 99. Guide me, O oh thy great Jehovah. Hear me through this barren land. I am weak, but thou might. Hold me, you with thy power of my hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. All right, all right. Guide me, oh. Yes. And we 
tonight that you will have your way in this place. That you will allow the moderator this morning. As he comes to us tonight, give him the wisdom that you gave to us. Give him this courage you gave to David. Give him the fortitude that you gave to press him on. As he moves through every book, may missionary to bring your word to your people. Yeah. I'd like him tonight, dear Father, to be your voice, yeah. Yeah. to be your strength, yeah. to be your all, your person, yeah. so that they will know yeah. who you are. Yeah. And we will all be able, dear Father, to worship you, yeah. to yeah. praise you, yeah. and to love you unconditionally, yeah. yeah. say yeah. that to love. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. We thank you now. Thank you. We thank you. Thank we you. magnify you. We glorify yeah. Yeah. your presence. Yeah. And the Father, most importantly, yeah. we thank you for the precious gift of Jesus. Yeah. For you are alive to come to this world, dear Father. Yeah. You spent 30 years down here. Yeah. But he came to the in the last three years. Yeah. And he carried your word yeah. from place to place. Yeah. He created many different miracles and did many things. Yeah. But the one thing he did, dear Father, yeah. oh, was yeah. to show us how we shall worship, oh, yeah. how we shall yeah. yeah. honor. I wish to depend yeah. upon you. Yeah. And that's why we are thankful mm-hmm. for that gift. But then the Father, he wouldn't even want it. Because yeah. what he did, yeah. the Father, was he took all this whole world, yeah. all the sin that had been created before him, and the sin that came after him. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. walked up on that yeah. 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 The yeah. 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 yeah, The Father carried the cross on his back. He raised him up. Yeah. When he raised him up, the yeah. Yeah. he did not forget who we were. Yeah. Yeah. But he did honor of these words when he said, forgive them. Yeah. But he know not what, what they do. Yeah. Then the part he said, it is finished. And when he said it is finished, he had performed what he had come to this world to do. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to provide us the opportunity for salvation. Yeah. 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 To be able to reach out and hold and grab hold. Yeah. And we thank you, dear Father, for as he went yeah. into the tomb, yeah. he did not stay there. Yeah. On that third day, he did ride yeah. with all power oh, in his hand. Yeah. And he allowed us, dear Father, yeah. and we will just believe to have that same, that same resurrected body one yeah. day will be yeah. out. Yeah. And we'll be able to walk yeah. in your presence. Yeah. Be able to talk yes. in your presence, yes. Yes. to sing yes. and to worship yes. on that precious day when you do return. Yes. And I ask your Father, I ask your Father, yes. that our name yes. will be written yes. in the book of life yes. so that we might be able mm-hmm. to see yes. yes. your glory. Yes. I'll be the Father. We ask in your precious Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen.
Good evening, everybody. We want to thank you all for coming out. This is our celebration of gratitude. Right. This is our celebration of gratitude. It's Revival 2020. Come on, let's give God a hand. Yes. We celebrate these three days, we didn't come to ask God for anything. Right. We just came to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you, Lord God, for healing. Thank you for the Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for making it a house of God. Thank you for all the work. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, 
do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I have read Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, and let God bless the word. Sister Chapman is our exhorter, and she's always so faithful. I want to thank her for that. We're going to ask the choir now to come with a selection. After that, we'll, somebody will come from St. Paul and, uh, and share with our welcome tonight. Yeah. 
I might even just say it was the benediction and, and go on home. They preached the sermon for that day. They blessed us, but I tell you, I tell you one thing about St. Paul, you're going to leave here better than you came. It is a house of refuge for God's people. And I don't care what you're going through, and I don't care how bad it got you, you can always feel at home and find what you need right here at the Paul. And the reason you can do that is because God is in the building. God is in the building. It's his promise in his word that whether two or three are gathered together in my name, then I will be in the midst of them. So God is truly here with us tonight. Um, while they were preparing our welcome, I hope that you all have felt welcome already. While our um, technology ministry is preparing our welcome, we're going to ask our stewards to come and lead us in our tithes and offerings. Oh, 
Because I'm Elo, he is truth. He's a man of God. Amen. Through and through. And you're going to see it here tonight. He don't make small of who God is yeah. and who God is in his life. Yeah. And he let God lead him and direct him in all that he does. And we are so thankful at El Bethel that we have a shepherd like him. And I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed tonight because what you're going to hear is, is not Pastor Julia Trailer. You're going to hear God.
chapter, starting at the 11th verse. And if you don't mind, could you please stand in reverence of God's word tonight, if you are able to stand. Luke, the 17th chapter, starting at the 11th verse. When you have it, say amen. Amen. If you need a little more time, say just a second, Pastor. All right, we'll wait on you. Amen. It's not a race. All right, you said you got it. The Bible says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem mm -hmm. that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Mm -hmm. And he entered into a certain village. Mm -hmm. There met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Mm -hmm. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, mm -hmm. have mercy on us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. May God bless the reading of his word so that we may become better doers and not simply just hearers of God's word. Let us pray. The gracious Father, I come to you yet once again humbled as I know how. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to preach to this awaiting congregation. God, I just say thank you Amen. for being able to stand here to do your will. All right. So it is, Heavenly Father, that I ask that you pour into me so that I might pour out unto this congregation. God, I pray that you give me preaching clarity and preaching power tonight. 
Heavenly Father, remove me out of the way and increase thyself. God, I pray that the listeners not only hear and, and hear and see a word, but God, I pray that they receive this word as well. All right. In your son Jesus Christ's name it is that I pray. Amen. 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 Amen, church. I would like to preach from the thought, are you that one? Are you that one? If you don't mind, do me a favor tonight. Look over at your neighbor. I'm not going to ask you to touch anybody. But look over at your neighbor. I don't care how far they are away from you. And just ask them, are you that one? We're going to answer that question a little later. And it's interesting how God works and moves and connects and communicates. And I had the privilege of talking to your pastor on Friday, and she told me that the revival did not have a specific theme, but that this revival was a celebration of gratitude, right? So she said, gratitude to God for all that he has done for you, Amen. for the church, for you individually, for the church, and for you as a collective body of people. He's, he's guided you through a pandemic, and even though we're still in it, he still guided you through, and you're still here. So that is enough reason right there to give him gratitude. So gratitude to God. And so he brought you through, and I just want to let you know that I did not plan, Pastor Vicklin, on preaching this topic. And I wasn't going to because I had something else in mind, but I understand how God works. And see, God always talks to me in certain ways. I don't know how he speaks to you, but I understand and I know what his voice sounds like. And when I hear his voice, I pay attention to it. After I got off the phone with Pastor Vicklin, I went to Facebook, and the first thing I saw when I opened up was... Deacon Jeff Hurt and Calvary from Millersville, Georgia, singing their song, I Am That One. And so from that moment on, I knew that God was talking to me then. I knew that God was saying to me, I know that you already had something else planned. I know that you already had another sermon, but I'm putting this in your spirit, and I'm asking you to obey me so that somebody tonight yes, yes. can be blessed. So here it is tonight. Are you that one? Yeah, the Bible explains that as Jesus entered this certain village, he was met by ten men. These ten men, they had leprosy. The Bible refers to these men as lepers, and I want us to understand this disease. It is a disease that wreaks havoc on the body. And I want you to understand, walk with me in your mind as I yeah, paint this picture. Yeah. I want you to imagine these men. It causes discoloration on the skin. Yeah. It causes lumps on the skin. It causes deformity and disfigurement. And it is very contagious. Yeah. Understand this, St. Paul. It is very contagious. And I want you to understand this. This disease that is called leprosy, it reminds me of something that we may find people suffering with today, and I would like to call it spiritual leprosy. Yes, yes spiritual leprosy is very much like its cousin, physical leprosy, because it starts inside of the body. It starts inside of the body, but then eventually the effects of it show on the outside, much like the discoloration of the skin, much like the lumps on the skin, much like the deformity of the skin. Spiritual leprosy can do the same thing to us. Spiritual leprosy can deform us. Spiritual leprosy can transform us into something that we don't look like, into something that people don't recognize. We are supposed to be children of God. Children of God are supposed to look a certain way, but spiritual leprosy will cause deformities in the body and will have us looking nothing like a child of God. Yes. Spiritual leprosy, it shows up in our faces. Yeah. We frown at the word of God when we have spiritual leprosy. Yeah, spiritual leprosy shows up in the form in our legs. Yeah. Somebody said, how does that work, Pastor? Well, spiritual leprosy will make our legs move faster than run away from the word of God. It'll make us run away from anybody that yeah. looks like yeah. they want to talk about God. Spiritual leprosy will make somebody that's always lazy 
reason and authority, it'll make them move because the only thing you will see is the back of their head as they're running away from you. Spiritual leprosy. Yeah, but one of the most dangerous parts of leprosy, spiritual leprosy as well, is that it is infectious. It is contagious. But I want you to understand that there's a cure for it. There's a cure for spiritual leprosy. The cure for spiritual leprosy is the word. The word of God. The word of God is not the vaccine for that disease. The word of God is what we need to combat spiritual leprosy. But Jesus here, he enters this certain village. Yeah. These 10 men with leprosy, they stand far off from everybody. Uh -huh. Because they, they, and they lifted their voices. Uh -huh. They lifted their voices to Jesus because they weren't close to him. Uh -huh. Understand that during this time it was understood and it was the law. That one that suffered from leprosy, they could not be around other people. They could not be around other people because of the infectious nature of the disease. They had to remain some distance from people. But understand here, church, but this did not prevent them from being around one another. They could hang out with one another. But I like what they did here. This makes me feel real good because they didn't let the fact that they were sick cause them to pass up on an opportunity when they saw Jesus. They didn't pass up on an opportunity to petition Jesus for help. I want you to remember this because we're going to come back to it later. So you may say, well, what did they do? What did they do? They called on the name of Jesus. They petitioned him for help. And I want to let you know that we should do the same thing today. We should boldly call on the name of the Lord. We should boldly call on him because he hears our call. He hears our cry. He knows our pain. They knew who Jesus was and they called on him. But then they didn't just call on him any kind of way, church. They said, Master. They said, Master. And they cried, have mercy on us. Uh, they didn't ask for grace. They asked for mercy. Both mercy and grace has to do with the kindness and the compassion of God. But mercy specifically is specifically God's kindness and his compassion towards us in the context of not giving us what we deserve because of sin. Yeah. But see, grace is the kindness and compassion given to us even though we don't deserve it. Right. So you got to understand, they ask for mercy. And I just want to know tonight, is there anybody in St. Paul that's ever felt fallen down on your knees and asked God for mercy? Is there anybody in this church where you didn't know exactly what to pray for. You didn't know what kind of words were going to come to your mouth. You didn't know what you needed to say, but you fell down on your knees and you said, Lord, have mercy on me. You knew to ask for mercy. Not that you deserve the mercy, but because you needed it. And typically, this is when, this is when, this type of request, when it's given, it's given through a heartfelt show of emotion by the one that's petitioning. So upon hearing their request, Jesus does not hesitate. Even though Jesus is probably weary from his travels, he still takes the time, church, to listen to what they were requesting. And I just want to let you know tonight that he hears and listens to us as well. There's never a time that Jesus will not hear us. I don't care what time it is in the day. I don't care how late it is at night. You can make your request known to him and he will hear you. Philippians 4 and 6 says for us to be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be made known to God. And this is what they did. They made their request known to him. So St. Paul, I need you to pay attention here. Jesus heard their request. But I want you to understand, he makes no mention of healing in his response. Right. You don't believe this right there in the Bible? Yeah. They made their request, but Jesus did not tell them right away, you are healed. Yeah. Understand that his response seemingly did not line up with the request. Yeah. Normally at this time, when somebody makes a request to Jesus, 
In the Bible, Jesus normally looks at them and says, your faith has made you whole. But because of your faith, you are healed. But I want you to understand, if you don't believe me, read it in the Bible. He does not tell them this. We do not see Jesus say this at all. He tells them rather to go show yourselves to the priests. <laughs> they just said, Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus just said, okay, go see the priest. Right. Jesus, why don't you tell them to go see the priest? Well, for my Bible readers, I know you understand Leviticus 14. It outlines the process of purification after leprosy. Understand Leviticus 14 outlines the process of purification from leprosy after the healing. That's important that Jesus made sure to keep with this law. But what is interesting is that the Bible does not tell us that Jesus heals them before telling them to go and present themselves. All right, all right. Jesus just says, go show yourselves to the priests. Mm -hmm. They make their request and Jesus answers, go see the priest. So let me bring this, in, this comparison in a little closer for somebody that may not get it. You might not understand, so maybe you can get this right here. Young ladies, you may walk outside. This is how it is. This is the comparison of what Jesus said. You may go outside getting ready to go to the store and you notice that your tire is flat right. on your car. You go back in the house, I don't know, you might go back in to your father, to your boyfriend, or to your husband and tell them, I was on my way to the store, but my tire is flat. Right. You're petitioning to them, I need you to fix my tire. Right. I need you to change my tire. Well, Jesus told them to go see the priest. This would be the same thing if your husband, boyfriend, or father said, well, I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> he didn't address the flat tire. He just said, I'll see you when you get back. Jesus did not address what they petitioned for. He just told them, go see the priest. Well, well, maybe that's not enough. Maybe you've been dealing with paralysis in your legs, and maybe you've been paralyzed for a long time, and you prayed to God and asked God to give you the strength to be able to walk. You've asked God for you to be able to stand up and walk like everybody else, and God answered your prayer by saying, get up and come here. He didn't say that you are healed. He didn't say that your legs not work. He just gave you a command to do. Yeah, that's interesting. Why would he do this? It seems like God forgot the healing part. But what Jesus wanted to see was their obedience. He wanted to see how obedient they would be. He heard their call. He heard their cry. He heard what they wanted. But he wanted to know, well, did you hear what I said? I heard what you said, but I said go see the priest. He wanted to make sure that they would be obedient in what he said to yes. them. This tells me one thing here, church. It tells me that Jesus can heal without telling you that you are healed. Yeah. Instead of telling us that we're healed all the time and giving us the command, sometimes Jesus is saying, you need to step out on faith. Yeah. You need to just do what I said do. Yeah. We've got to learn to be obedient to the command of Jesus. But see, we don't, we don't like to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see if we would believe before we receive. Yeah. Can you believe before you receive it? How many of you right now have sent up petitions but you haven't received it yet? Right. How many of you wait, are waiting on an answer to your prayer right now? But I want to say to you, just continue to stay encouraged. Continue to do the work of the Lord. Continue to believe that what you said and what Jesus said will come to fruition. Jesus tells them to go see the priest. This means that as they walked away to see the priest, oh hallelujah, as they were walking, healing had not yet taken place. But I want to let you know that when we get off of our knees sometimes, yes, the healing has not yet taken place. Right. No, it hasn't. But are we going to remain obedient and do what he said do while still waiting to be healed? Yeah. Are we going to wait on Jesus? Or are we going to just sit there and say, well, Lord, you have not answered my call yet. I don't know when you're going to do it, God, but we need to understand, but you will. I don't know how you're going to fix it, God, but I know it's going to come. I don't know when it's going to 
going to happen, God, but I know it's coming. And while I'm waiting on it to come, I'm going to continue to worship you. I'm going to continue to praise you. I'm going to continue to do your will. Even if it means loving my enemies, God, I'm going to continue to do what you command me to do. And I do it because I know that you are able to do that which I have requested, even though it may be on your time and not my time. But see, now look what happened because of their obedience. The Bible says that it came to pass as they went, mm -hmm. not before they went, but as they went. Meaning that as they were on their way, y'all know the story. As they were on their way, they were cleansed. As they were on their way, they were healed. Look at God. Look at God in the situation. As they were in the process of being obedient, yeah. Jesus grants their requests. Right. What an awesome God we serve. As I'm in the process of being obedient to God, he grants my request. As I'm in the process, maybe y'all don't understand it yet. Maybe y'all don't get it yet. As I'm in the process of my sanctification, as I'm in the process of my renewed mind, as I'm in the process of my walk with God, he still he still grants my healing. He still gives me the healing and the cleansing that I need. Even though I have not yet attained. Even though I have not yet arrived. Even though I am still flawed. Even though I still got some problems. Even though sometimes people still make me mad. Even though the wrong thoughts come in my head. Even though I have not attained yet. He still cleansed me. Because I continue with the walk. Right. Understand your walk is not going to be perfect. Your walk is not going to be perfect. Your walk is going to be laced with mistakes. But he'll still cleanse you as you go. He'll still heal you as you continue to move. Yeah, so in the end, verse 15 starts off and it says, and one of them, just one. Yeah. Now, I know my Bible said 10 of them in the beginning. Uh -huh. I don't know about your Bible. My Bible said it was 10. Uh -huh. Verse 15 says, and one of them, uh -huh. when he saw that he was healed, uh -huh. so in the process of him walking to the priest, right. he realized, hey, my skin looks different. Uh -huh. Oh, my joints don't hurt like they used to hurt. Yeah. Oh, the discoloration has gone away. The disformity has left me. Uh -huh. Something has happened while I'm on my way to the priest. Yeah. And because I can see it, yeah. oh, I need to turn around and thank somebody. I need to turn around and go give thanks to the one that made it all happen. The Bible says that he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Fell down on his face. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. But then the Bible says, and he was a Samaritan. Uh, remember when I said earlier in the sermon tonight that they did not miss the opportunity to petition Jesus for help. They didn't. All ten of them cried out to Jesus. They did not miss the opportunity to call on him for help. But here they are. They passed up on the opportunity to thank him for what he's done. They didn't miss the opportunity to petition, but they passed up on the opportunity for thanks. They passed up on the opportunity to give him glory. They passed up on the opportunity to praise him. They passed up on the opportunity just to say thank you, God. But I just want to know, is there anybody in this church that before you came into the knowledge of God, that you called but you never thank him for pulling you through. Come on, somebody. I want to talk to somebody that's not perfect. I want to talk to somebody that's going through some stuff. I want to talk to somebody that don't always get it right, that don't always say the right thing, that's going through some stuff. You know sometimes that you called on God, but you did not turn around and say thank you. But our God is full of mercy. Oh, yeah, and I thank him for it. So here it is. He says, and he was a Samaritan. Uh -huh. Now, 
Jesus granted their request. And he heard that petition. He heard their cry. And he cleansed them, but they failed to stop. They failed to turn around and say, thank you. Keep this in mind. See, the miracle happened before they made it to the destination. They were healed by headed to the destination. The destination was to show the priest, but healing took place along the way. St. Paul, the fact that this happened this way should allow us to understand that is happening in our lives right now. You may not see it, you may not understand it, but healing is happening in your life right now. It's happening right now, church. It's happening right now. But the question is for you, for the Christian, for the believer, where is our destination? Where are we trying to go? See, I want you to understand that we're walking, we're marching, we're moving. But where are we headed? Where are we headed? That's a rhetorical question you don't have to answer out loud. You can keep it in your mind, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you some, uh, some idea of where we're supposed to be headed. Mm -hmm. Typically, when you ask the Christian, what's your destination? Where do you want to go? And they'll tell you that I want to be in heaven. Yeah. Uh -huh. I want to go to heaven. Yeah. But I want to say to you that maybe that's right, but there needs to be a little tweak in that. Yeah. Our ultimate goal is, as believers is to please God while on this side yeah. Yeah. and live in his presence on the other side yeah. with access to him by way of the new heaven and the new earth. Yeah. See, it's not just enough to say you want to go, go to heaven. What heaven do you want to spend eternity in? Yeah. 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 Which one do you want to spend eternity in? a little bit of teaching right here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? Who do you want to hang out with? Yeah. I want to hang out with Jesus yeah. while I have the ability and the access to God. And I know that there's somebody in this church tonight that can look back over your life and recognize the blessings that he has given you. Recognize the healing that he has given you. Recognize the miracles in your life while you are on this journey. What a shame it would be if we are the recipients of blessings and healings and miracles all the while but never stopped and took the opportunity to look back and to go back and glorify God for what he's done. Understand the Bible makes a point to identify it said that he was a Samaritan. Yeah. To identify who he was. Uh -huh. And see, I want, to understand, I want you to understand tonight that the fact that he was a Samaritan is an important fact, but it was not too important for me in the subject of my text. Yeah. yeah, because as a good preacher, I need to hold that and keep that in my pocket because you all say Paul might call me back to preach again. Yeah. And that's a whole different sermon on his own. So because you might call me back to preach again, I'm not going to expound on that too much, but I do want to let you know that the Samaritans, they were the ones that were traditionally, yeah. traditionally not versed in the worship and praise of God yeah. at this time. They didn't quite get it. They didn't quite know what they were doing, but the Jews did. The Jews knew all about worship. They knew all about praise. Whether they did it or not was a separate thing, but they knew what to do. But here it is. The Samaritan is the one, the stranger, the outcast, the foreigner, yeah, is the yeah. one that decided to go back and say, hey. yeah, but I'm going to stop right there. I don't want to go no further with that because we got something else to talk about. We got something else to cover. That's enough on talking about the, the, the Samaritan. But see, he was the only one that came back. The only one that turned back and thanked them for healing. Yeah. The only one that turned back mm -hmm. and fell on his face. Yeah. Yeah. Understand, yes, Lord. they receive a healing. Uh -huh. He received something else. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus says, weren't there ten of you? Where are the other nine? Church, the other nine were so happy about the healing, they forgot to turn around and thank God. They forgot to turn around and thank Jesus. Yeah. How many times have we been so happy that God has brought us out of the situation? How many times have we been so elated that he brought us through some situation, but we did not take the time to turn around and fall down on our knees. We did not take the time to turn around and say, thank you. Yeah, they received the physical healing. They received a physical cleansing. 
But the one that returned, he received the physical, but he received something else. Jesus tells him, see, this is it, this is it here. This is what we're used to hearing Jesus say. Amen. Jesus tells him that his faith has made him whole. Amen. He told him at the beginning to go see the priest. As they were walking, they realized that they were healed. As they were walking, they realized that they were cleansed. Uh -huh. But there was one that turned back. Uh -huh. And when that one turned back, he went back yes. and fell down yes. on yes. his knees. Yes. And when he fell down on his knees, yes. he gave God praise uh -huh. and he gave him glory. Yes. And what Jesus did was told him that his faith made him whole. Yes. Whole means completeness. Yes. Whole Jesus was saying is that now you got your healing. Now yeah. you got your cleansing. Yeah. But now your faith has made you whole. Yeah. So my question is tonight, yeah. St. Paul, are you that one? Yeah. I want you to look at your faith and ask your neighbor. Bye. 
And there may be somebody here tonight that does not know who God is. There may be somebody here tonight that has been struggling with your faith. There may be somebody here tonight that feels like the world's just been kicking you, kicking you, and kicking you. And you feel as if you have no better turn. But I want to let you know that you can turn to him. That you can turn to God. And when you turn to him, oh, you just have to go to him and submit yourself to him. Holy and full. Understand, church, this life is not ours, but it belongs to God. It belongs to God. And when we realize that, when we understand that the things that we go through, that is all for God's glory, it will give us the peace that we need to live in. The peace that surpasses all understanding. So I just want to ask tonight as we open the doors of this church, would there be one tonight? As the musicians play and as they sing, would there be one tonight? This is your opportunity.
can't see the phone. But that'll preach, won't it? You watch him say. Pastor Hill, did, did, did you see it from a different perspective tonight? That'll preach, won't it? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. We're so grateful for all of you who have turned down here. We're so especially grateful for everybody. I tell you, you all are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we love you. Those who are Paul, that belong to the Paul, and those who have come to visit and worship with us. I just want to say that uh, continue to pray for us. Amen. We're in transition. Amen. God is doing a new thing here. Yeah. I suppose yeah. focus is so winning, winning folks back to Christ. Amen. And I tell you, uh, we, we're committed to whatever mission that is before us, continue to lift us up in you. When you think about us at the Paul, when you pray, think about us here at the Paul. Amen. So excited about that. Food is prepared for you tonight. We're gonna to ask you to pick your tray up and you can take it with you tonight as you leave. We know that we cannot fellowship in the building and be safe, but we do wanna show you our gratitude. We do wanna say thank you. Thank you for coming and being with us. Uh, just wanna, my husband is standing. Right. Hey. And uh, my mother-in-law, if you just raise your hand. And y'all, we, we, we're that family that has so many children. We got children that are birthed, and we got children that don't belong to us. And they all over the world, and they doing magnificent things. And, it's good to have one of my babies in the house. Uh, she see me, look, she, uh, she looking cross-eyed, but Sister Abbott, would you would you raise your hand? She's a phenomenal woman, phenomenal woman, and she is an awesome woman of God, and we're so glad that she traveled here from Bacon to be with us, but she's one of the children that I'm raising. I, I got so many kids, y'all, and I'm grateful for them. I don't have to worry about who's gonna take care of me when I get, well, I can't see that myself. And so I just love it, I love it. Thank all of y'all for coming. We're not gonna hold you. We're gonna ask this master pastor if he would come back right now and lead us in our benediction and our grace. Amen, amen. We thank God for you tonight. Uh, we thank God for his Holy Spirit being in this place tonight, amen. Uh, Sister Ozzie, it's good to see you, amen. And I also see one of my classmates, Tia. It's good to see you as well. As well, if all hearts and minds are clear, let us stand. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you for what we have seen. God, we thank you for what we have heard. And God, we thank you for what we have received. Heavenly Father, we receive your word tonight. Yeah, yeah. And God, because we receive it tonight, God, we will take this word with us as we leave this place. Heavenly Father, when we leave, we'll be able to tell somebody what happened here tonight. And God, the words would not be that that preacher did this or that preacher did that, but God, we will tell them that I am that one. Yeah. We'll tell somebody yeah. that I'm the one that went back and said thank you to God because of everything that he has done. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you give us the traveling grace tonight that we need as we travel on the dangerous highways. And God, I pray that when we arrive at our destination that we find everything decent and that we find everything in order. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the food that has been prepared for our consumption, God. We ask that the makers, that the hands that have worked this food, prepared this food, God, we pray that they are blessed. Heavenly Father, we ask that this food provides nourishment for our bodies, just as your word will provide nourishment for our souls. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight, and we just ask that you continue to be with us until we meet each other again. Mm -hmm. God, be with us and keep us. Heavenly Father, we love you, we need you. In your son Jesus Christ's name it is that we pray. All hearts say amen. If you're a believer, say amen.